Today on the Nivlac 57 YouTube channel, we're going to take the crap marrow to the dyno. Now that we've taken the turbo off of the crap marrow, we need to take this thing to the dyno to find out if that was a mistake. As you guys saw in previous videos, we recently replaced the 5.3 liter and the S475 with a naturally aspirated 6 liter. We did a video where we prepared that for this car and we got it running and we made a couple of uh, pools on the street and things didn't go so well. Now we've done quite a few LS builds in the past and frankly it was a little confusing as to why the engine failed on us. What ended up happening is it started to eat up bearings and it uh, basically lost oil pressure and was beginning to uh, tear itself apart. Now also in other videos we've talked about the very important uh, pickup tube to oil pan clearance. Basically, your oil pickup sticks down into your oil sump and it needs to have adequate clearance between that and the oil pan bottom in order to be able to suck oil into the pickup and provide oil pressure at higher RPM operating conditions. Now, this is a sweet spot kind of thing. You don't want to have it too far away or else you're not going to be taking advantage of all of the oil in your oil sump. The adequate clearance for the oil pickup is 3 8 of an inch and what we found is our brand new oil pan did not give anywhere close to that amount of clearance. In fact it was closer to an eighth of an inch which just isn't going to work. We are very confident that is what the failure was and frankly I should have measured this before I installed the oil pan but I figured a brand new oil pan should have adequate clearance. Um, I, I would have hoped they would have thought about that. I'm, I'm pretty disappointed. Uh, obviously, you know, that's thousands of dollars and dozens of hours that were wasted, but as you guys know, we Nelsons aren't quitters. We yanked the old six liter out and we now have installed in the car the LY6 that was in my Fairmont station wagon. It's mostly stock except for it has a sloppy stage 2 camshaft and some pack 1218 springs. Additionally for this car we installed a LS3 intake manifold which are widely considered one of the best factory intake manifolds that are available. It's definitely a bummer that the old engine failed because that was an aluminum block 6 liter and that definitely saved some weight. And we may have to make up for that with some encouragement. But the only way we're going to find out if that's required is if we get it on the dyno and get it on the track. So let's get on to the dyno. After this first pull, I was frankly a little bit disappointed with how low the horsepower number was. I was really hoping that we could break 400 horsepower, but it was looking very improbable. I guess I probably should have thought about it more. The LY6 is rated for 375 horsepower at the crankshaft, and all we really did was install a mild sloppy stage 2 camshaft in the engine. By the time you factor in drivetrain losses, it's probably right in the neighborhood of where we ended up. One thing that is kind of cool about naturally aspirated engines is you're kind of in a much safer place than with boosted engines. 
What I mean by this is with a boosted engine, you kind of have to run the fuel where you have to run the fuel, and you have to be careful with your ignition timing. You're not really optimizing them for the most amount of horsepower. You're optimizing them to keep the engine safe because at the higher boost levels, you're really running at the risk of hurting stuff if you don't. With a naturally aspirated engine, you can play with variables that you normally can't. So we did some timing and some fuel sweeps, and here is where we ended up. Now that we had the fuel and the timing optimized, it was time to start playing with something that I've never gotten to play with. Injection timing. Now I'll go over this in more detail a little bit later, but essentially I wanted to play with where the injector was firing to see if it was worth any horsepower. As you can see, that was actually worth a little bit of horsepower. Now, naturally aspirated guys are probably aware that uh, a five horsepower gain is kind of a huge deal. It's not like a boosted engine where you can just turn it up a couple pounds of boost to get to where you want to go. With a naturally aspirated engine, the atmospheric pressure is all the pressure you're going to get. So seeing a five horsepower gain, which was likely due to better distribution of the fuel, was huge. The last thing that we wanted to try was we wanted to remove the fabricated air intake that my dad and I made for the engine to see if it was a restriction and see if it picked up any power. So for the next pull, we gave that a shot. guys well that was a relatively successful day we made 367 horsepower which is around what I think this thing should make but also I want to uh, try and make people think a little bit differently about a dyno if you think about our session for the day we came and the very first pull that we made was 345 horsepower after making some tweaks and deleting a few components we picked up 22 horsepower. A lot of people are so focused on the horsepower number of the vehicle, but horsepower is just a number. What we really use a dyno for is a tool to make more horsepower than what we came with. Now one of our big takeaways from the day was the effect of the injection timing on the car. Injection timing is something that I have never really messed with. It's always been a table that I've glanced through when looking at a tune, but I, I've never really put any thought into it or thought about you know what it could do to the performance of the vehicle. 
One of the things that I mentioned in earlier videos is we installed uh, a little bit larger injector than maybe what is required, especially for only 367 horsepower. And the reason that we did that was I wanted to play around with injection time. To go over more of my thoughts on that, let's go to the whiteboard and I will explain why I think it made such an improvement. All right guys, so let's talk about injection timing. So if you think about an engine, it is a four stroke engine. That means it has the intake, the compression, the power, and the exhaust stroke. So each one of these strokes takes a certain amount of time. If you size the injector such that it will be close to 80 to 90% duty cycle, at maximum output on your car, basically that injector is going to be firing for most of your injection cycle. There's only gonna be a very small portion of time where the injector is not on. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to put a larger injector in and maybe target the point at which it injects fuel around the intake stroke. Now, the reason that I thought that this would make an improvement is basically if you are firing your injector at 80 to 90% duty cycle for most of the time it is spraying, it is spraying against a closed valve, and I can't imagine that is good for distribution. So I wanted to go with a much larger injector so that I would have a much shorter pulse width uh, what we found was we were close to 42% injector duty cycle, and I was able to really target where I wanted to put that injection cycle. And what I chose to do was to place it near when the intake valve was actually open. Now, how did I do this? Well, I used a tool that the Holly ECUs uh, have in their software and basically how that works is you punch in your camshaft specs which uh, thankfully are very easily found for the sloppy stage two and what that tool in the holly software does is it basically it takes your injection cycle and tries to center it over the intake valve event if you do some research on some forums what you're going to find is that's actually not really what you want. You want your injection cycle to look something more like this, where the end of the injection is closer to um, when the valve is actually still open. The reason for this is you want the uh, fuel to start building up and then make its way into the cylinder and end before the valve shuts. So that being said, the Holly output is not particularly useful, but what you can do is you can zero out your fuel table in the Holly software, and that pinpoints the center of your intake valve event in the Holly software. Then you need to take the Holly software output and translate it into whatever ECU that you are using. Now, another cool thing about the Holly tool is it takes into account the location of your fuel injector. Now, you should be aware that the fuel that your injector injects, it takes a certain amount of time in order to get down to the intake valve and be injected into the engine. This is a variable thing and um, it changes with engine speed, you know, the amount of airflow that is gonna be present in the port and the nice thing about the Holly tool is it takes that all into account. You tell it how far your injector is away from your intake valve and it spits out a number using some sort of model and it will take that into account. This is the main benefit for using the Holly tool because it makes a curve for you and you're good to go. So I have been tuning for quite a few years and I've always had a trouble trying to get cars to cold start and to idle really, really nice. I've sort of gotten them to work okay, but it's always been like just, you know, a little bit off of where I'd really like it to be. Well, now that I've actually looked at this injection timing in detail, what I have found is 
It actually makes a huge difference on your idle quality and your cold start performance. Imagine this. Spraying the fuel while the intake valve is open makes a big difference on how the engine runs. Who'd have thunk? Well, nobody's perfect and uh, it's actually a little bit embarrassing that it, it took me this long to actually learn that. I've also made this change to a couple other vehicles and wow, everything starts and idles nice now. So I hope I explained that well. If you guys have more comments, make sure to leave them down below. On to the conclusion. Make sure you like and subscribe. Consider becoming a channel member. We'll see you in the next one.